Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga review of chapter 928, The Courtesan Komurasaki takes the stage. And we have what I feel is a nicely rounded chapter happening here where we get to catch up with what's going on in the prison line, but also this chapter has its own little self-contained story with Bingo, which we'll get to in a bit, but I like to start out in the mine on the particular topic of Eustace Kid. This guy has had a pretty bad run with Yonko apparently, I mean having been defeated by Kaido and losing an arm in a battle with the Red Hair Pirates, although that's just classic Shanks though, isn't it? The dude sacrifices one arm for a member of the worst generation and then goes ahead and takes an arm from another. But I am thrilled to receive this tiny, tiny morsel of information in regards to the Red Hair Pirates, who are currently by far the most mysterious of the Yonko groups out there. Their exploits are completely unknown, so the fact that we have a confirmed conflict here excites me a lot more than it probably should. And it's quite a brutal outcome as well, really. Although I guess it's nowhere near confirmed that it was Shanks or one of his crew that took the arm from Kid. It might be one of those situations where a character, in this case Kid, was being an overzealous dick and due to some particularly unlucky circumstances, ended up losing an arm in an accident. In any case, we finally have part of the reason why Kid seems to be so hell-bent on taking down Shanks. But that's more of a long-term goal at the moment because he's currently also operating on a Luffy level of determination in order to beat Kaido. And actually, I quite enjoyed the panel right at the end of the prison segment of the chapter with Luffy and Kid both angrily yelling that they will be the one to beat Kaido. And that really does strongly flag what I feel is going to be their character arcs during Wano. These two have tried and failed to face Kaido on their own and they're going to need to learn to work together which will be extraordinarily difficult given how much we know of Luffy and how scarily similar Kid's attitude seems to be. We had a situation similar to this in Dress Rosa where Law and Luffy were both determined to take down Doflamingo, but in that case Law was just a much more reasonable character and he eventually acquiesced to Luffy ultimately carrying it out. But I don't see that happening with Kid. Like he isn't just going to have this moment where he sees Luffy rising above his own limits and going, well, I guess I'll just leave it to that guy, yeah. Rather, and this might be a bit of a bold claim, but I think that the outcome of the entire Wano arc is going to hinge on the cooperation between Luffy and Kid. But there are some nice other colorful faces in the prison this week as we have a nice cameo appearance from Raizo, which I loved everything about. His gag of being the most conspicuous ninja possible and yet still somehow succeeding in all of his efforts is fantastic. But I don't think I've really appreciated it until this chapter. There's just something about the image of him with his mask on and blending into the prison by mining that just had me in a ridiculous amount of laughter. Of course, we also spend some time with fan favorite character, Mr. Garibo, and his presence here is very functional as it serves to inform us that the Seastone Hancock have been made weaker than usual in order for the prisoners to work. Which is great because that answers an awful lot of questions that came up after the chapter featuring Luffy and Kid competing, but it does however feel like it comes a bit out of nowhere. Almost as if the chapter came out and there was a huge stirring amongst the fans about how this was logically possible and so the editors bushed Oda to provide an explanation. Other than that, the best part of Caribou's reintroduction was just how casually Luffy tried to get rid of him. He's certainly being seeded to be a quite important aspect of this escape mission though, with his line about knowing quite a lot about the place. He may even end up being being the key to the entire escape effort, which, you know, I think giving him some relevance would be nice. Oh, and one last thing about the prison, this chapter actually began with a really nice moment featuring the old man thanking Luffy for saving him, and we received a gentle reminder in regards to the subtlety of Luffy's character. He said that Grandpa Hyo just happened to be there, which is a cool line that takes me back to the idea that Luffy isn't a hero. He's a pirate, a fairly kind-hearted pirate, but a pirate nonetheless. Although he did almost immediately do something very hero-like by giving Grandpa Hyo some Kibidango tickets, but uh, meh. In any case, from one old man to another, let's talk a bit about Bingo, the foolish dude bra who gave up absolutely everything to pursue the love of Komurasaki. When this little flashback began, I was expecting it to end in a single page, but we actually got quite a decently fleshed out story happening here. And it's very cleverly told because you might think that it's a waste of pages to delve into this decrepit old man, but in doing so, it's actually conveying Komurasaki's character more so than his. From this tale, we now have a fantastic understanding of her, all through the brilliant vessel of a tale of heartbreak. And due to Oda's intent for us to sympathize with Bingo, we're definitely at least meant to feel as if Komurasaki is some sort of antagonistic figure at this stage. And I say at this stage because, well, the, this is One Piece, and I feel an awful lot like we've seen this character before, several times before. And in each case, I've not really enjoyed where they've ended up. The example that springs to mind initially is obviously Boa Hancock. At the moment, Komurasaki is what I thought Boa Hancock was going to be. This fiercely independent woman who uses people for their own personal gain, and for all intents and purposes is a bit of a heartless figure. But then Boa Hancock took a complete 180, fell in love with Luffy, 
and is now a firm protagonistic presence in the series. And then there's the most recent example I can think of, which is Charlotte Pudding. She was built into a magnificent antagonist with a whole agenda of her own, and then on the wedding day that all fell apart, and she became a love-struck protagonist. And there's a whole ton of other examples of this as well, like Viola, and even Nami and Robin kind of fall into this to some degree. So given this record, I just don't see Komurasaki turning out any differently. I think that by the end of Wano, she is going to be quite firmly in love, or we'll have explored some tragic backstory about how she lost her true love or whatever, and in any case, she'll be assisting our main characters. I really hope I'm wrong about this, because I'd love for a beautiful woman to finally be a pure antagonist, but I just can't invest any hope into that after Whole Cake Island. And just to make Komurasaki's turn to good even more possible, with the finale of this chapter, the evidence is mounting that she is probably Hiyori of the Kozuki clan. The juxtaposition from a panel of Komurasaki to Momonosuke just chatting about his lost sister is a pretty damn clear hint in my mind. Furthermore, this final segment also goes a long way to quelling the theory that Tama is Hiyori due to the fact that Momonosuke is talking about her, and you know, a reasonable person would assume that Momonosuke would be able to recognize his sister if it were Tama. Furthermore, Momonosuke states that Hiyori was six prior to when they were separated, and Tama is now only eight years old. But you know, what if Toki sent Tama 18 years into the future instead of 20? But then we have the question over when Tama met Ace, it would have had to have been during the year when he got captured and executed, and just look, yeah, the whole Tama being Hiyori theory isn't completely dead, especially with the weird dialogue during this chapter where she's all like, wow, wouldn't it be nice if you could meet with your sister who's sitting right here? And yeah, look, I added that last bit, but it was such a weird exchange, wasn't it? There was also that panel where Tama was looking very contemplatively. So yeah, I guess we could have some more crazy time things happening and Komurasaki is just a huge red herring, but I'm going to have to invoke Occam's razor here and say that Hiyori is probably just Komurasaki. But that pretty much does it for chapter 928. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies and other miscellaneous items, with proceeds also going directly to support the channel. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time then do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.